Shalom. This week we are reading Parshat Kiddushim, beginning in Leviticus 19. And the parasha, which contains many mitzvot, many commandments, begins with an exhortation. God says to Moshe to gather together the entire nation and to say to them, Kiddushim tihiyu, you shall be holy, for I, Hashem, I, the Lord your God, am holy. In other words, just as I am holy, so too I call upon you to be holy. We know that the Torah is our guidebook. It's the manifestation of Hashem's will for us on earth. It's everything that connects us to God in this world to live properly and to elevate all of existence to that connection. But the question might be asked, is the entire measure of a person measured by keeping the commandments, is that the measurement, as it were, of our success spiritually? This exhortation, you shall be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. What is that referring to? Is it referring to being holy by keeping the commandments that we're already aware of? Is it referring to being holy by doing everything that we've been told until now? Or is there something else here, something new? This exhortation, this call to us to be holy, is really universally recognized by our sages as being a call to a higher lifestyle. And it's an urging to put in just a little bit of extra effort, something a little bit extra. And our sages call this the need for us to sanctify ourselves even through that which is permitted to us. In other words, knowing when to stop, when something is really necessary and when something is not necessary. Just because something is permitted doesn't mean that we should do it, doesn't mean that we need to do it. Of course, this is not to be confused with the Nazarite who sort of cuts himself off from enjoying this world. We know that that, in essence, according to some opinions, is even a type of sin. The Nazarite, when he finishes his period of vow, has to bring a sin offering specifically because he decided to abstain from some of the goodness of this world that Hashem gives us, and that actually is a mistake. We're not supposed to cut ourselves off from this world because we are in this world, but the question really is, and that's what's being alluded to here by these words, you shall be holy. The question is, how much of this world do we really need? You shall be holy, for I, Hashem, your God, am holy. Well, what kind of a comparison is this? How can we be holy like God? What do we know about God, of course? We know that He is an all-consuming fire, that He has no form, that He has no end. So how could we be like Him? Our sages point out that we also know another thing about Him, and that he is that He is unlike anything else. He is separate. And that is really the Torah's definition of holiness, to be set apart. As we recall another verse from the book of Exodus that tells us God says to his people, Israel, you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. How are all of Israel like Kohanim? As the Kohanim, as the priests serve in the holy temple and their job is to bring holiness into the world through the exalted service of the Beit HaMikdash, so too, in their way, the entire people of Israel, the Jews, are the Kohanim, the priests in the temple that is this whole world, by bringing in holiness and uplifting the world by their way of example. And what precisely is that example that Israel is to teach the world? How do they do it? Here it is. By fulfilling these words, this edict, you shall be holy. But again, what does this mean? A holy lifestyle is not just living according to God's commandments, which after all is the best advice that we could do to uplift existence and the world to a connection with Him. But true holiness is not only measured by adherence to the commandments, because actually a person could fulfill all of the commandments, but do so in a very minimalistic manner. He might be a great guy, he might fulfill everything, but actually he might not be such a good person because he might not be addressing the negativity within his own nature. He may not be confronting the real work that he has to do in this world, which is the work of fixing himself, which of course is the most difficult thing of all. And where is that work measured? In other words, how can we determine how successful a person has been 
at uprooting this negativity, the true measure of holiness, that's the extra push, the extra effort, the extra mile that's being alluded to in these words. You shall be holy for I, Hashem, your God, am holy. It's not just a question of keeping all the, com the commandments in the best possible fashion. It's a question of knowing what we really need to do in this world. Sometimes something might be permitted, but it might not necessarily be something that we have to do. So it's really a question of not only staying away from what's wrong, because that's obvious. We don't get a medal for that. It's a question of holiness, and that's this exhortation that's really calling us to use some discernment and to show some type of, perhaps we could call it spiritual maturity, and to know that we're not just trying to do what God told us to do, to get away with it, you know, to do as much as we need to do, but, you know, at the same time, to get away with as much as we can, we want to confront our nature. We want to show God that we're willing to do that little bit of extra in order really to show Him and to, to train ourselves that something might be permitted, and it might really be okay, but we can limit ourselves because we're not just being led by our own nature. We are determining what that nature should be. And this is the true service of God and the true gateway to holiness and the true measure of a person addressing who we are, who we really are. Because if we don't change our insides and if we don't heed this call to be holy like Hashem, then we're not really serving God.